fight him, Jerry. Keep weapon him. Jerry side sure can fight. Oh, Danny's yellow. He can know better than his old man. Oh, oh, God, right so on. Come on. For you, Danny. Danny Hawkins' dad was hanged. Danny Hawkins' dad was hanged. Jerry, I came here to dance. Yeah? Well, quit dancing with Gilly Johnson. I told you, the coon hunt three months ago, she's out of your class. You've been pestering her ever since. You're drunk. I wonder Gilly walked away from you on the dance floor. You're out of line, Hawkins. You know, you're just about ripe for another beating. And I'm about ready to give it to you. Shut up, Jerry. <laughs> the killer blood, huh? Danny, did your old man have time to tell you how it feels to drop six feet at the end of a rope? <laughs> Jerry! Sugar. I gotta get back to the band. Come on, Billy. Come on. Isn't that pretty, Billy? Pretty, pretty, Billy. Nice, huh? 
Take it, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Billy, once more. Come on, Billy. Oh, come nice. on. Come on. That'll <laughs> What's the matter with you? Who does he think he is? Hey, what's the big idea? That's my compact. Yeah, come on back here. That's Janie's mirror. Get out the rust up. Lay off. Just because he's deaf and dumb. He's got a mind like a baby. Don't give you no right to make fun of him. Why don't you mind Lay him? off him. Forget it, George. He looks like he's had enough fights tonight. How long you been standing there, Billy? How long? You must be nuts. Talking to a dummy. Danny? Hi, Ken. How about a game later? Just the usual. Some of the boys are staying. The uh, Brothers Pond Bourbon and Poker Club. Not me. I can't afford that kind of poker. It just dawned on me that there's magic in the moonrise. It just dawned on me when we found our love at moonrise. A serenade of silver strings from dreamy violins turns winter into summer all at once. My life begins, it just dawned on me. You're not very courteous. Filled with romance. Let's give love a chance. We must never let it pass us by. Two hearts will sing in harmony, just like a symphony. You're not dancing with anyone else tonight, Gilly. Daniel, I'm a school teacher. I can't afford to fight with you here in front of everybody. I even stopped dancing with Jerry because he's been drinking. Jimmy Bibbs got his old man's car outside. You're coming with us. Certainly not. I'll carry you out. Matter, you look scared. I was just thinking about a little boy in one of my classes. School's out now. All the kids pick on him. Yeah? Give him milk, he breaks the glass. Hand him a toy, he smashes it. He gives me a... He gives me a lot of trouble. You don't like it? You know how it is with a teacher, Dan. 
Even if I hated him, I'd have to hide my feelings and try not to hurt him. You see, Dan, he's unhappy. And you just can't hurt a little boy. Golly, Dan, you're going too fast. If we start skiing, we'll never know what we hit. Slow down, for God's sake. Stop worrying about your old man. Now, I'm not worried about nothing but us. Pull her down, will you, Dan? For God's sakes. Be careful, Dan. That underpass is right ahead. It's all right. Jesse? It's late. I was out the Blackwater. It's near time for hunting. Did you hear anything from the railroad? I'll be on layoff for another three weeks. Why, you worried about your room rent? Come here, Daniel. A man needs something to keep him busy. Keep him out of mischief. I I guess I don't know very much about boys, Daniel. Ever since Grandma sent you to me from the hills to go to school, I... I tried my best, but... now... It isn't good for you never to have known your own... own Pa and Ma. Why don't you say it? About Pa shooting a man and getting hung for it. That's something I've never talked about. What are you trying to say, Aunt Jessie? Jimmy Biff's father spoke to me after church tonight. He said the car last night was your fault. Yours and that school teacher's. What about her? She can't handle young people a little better than that. Why, she wouldn't make a very good school teacher. I know you're not a bad boy, Daniel. In spite of what happened a long time ago, there's never been a drop of bad blood in our family. You couldn't help but be a good boy. That's what I told Walter Biff. That was right nice of you, Aunt Jessie. After this, let's... Let's talk together a little more often, huh? We'll talk. Kiss me goodnight, Daniel. I'm all right. You don't sound very happy. Should I be? 
I called Julie's house this morning. Her mother wouldn't talk to me. Well, the kids are okay. Doc says it's just shock. Everybody's blaming me for the wreck. I'm a school teacher and I let it happen. Anybody can have an accident. An accident? Are you always like that when you're drunk? Like what? Like... Like you had nothing but hate in you. You were scared. It was as though you wanted to kill yourself, kill all of us. Killy... People should understand each other. Especially when parties are in love. In love? You're out of your mind. What was between you and Jerry Sykes? I don't think that's any of your business. The way I figured, you're just a girl from the sticks. You worked a little harder than anybody else, and you went to college, and now you're looking for someone like Jerry. Jerry's the nicest boy I've ever known. Last night, he asked me to marry him. And you said yes. Of course I said yes. And because I went home with you, he hasn't called me today. Good evening, young folks. Good evening, Miss Simpkins. I didn't expect to see you up and about, Daniel. I'm all right, I reckon. Try to come to church next Sunday, Daniel. It'll do you a heap more good than those dances at Brother's Pond. Good night. Good night? Good night. Gilly. Gilly, I'm, I'm going to sit on a porch with you for a while. Last night I kissed you. Dan, please go. Don't touch me. Don't you see or care? If this goes on, I'll lose my job. Is that all you're afraid of? This is all I want. You the devil with everything else. Gilly. Gilly. It was to make you happy, not to hurt you. What am I going to tell Jerry? What am I going to tell Jerry? Jerry's tearing off a hot riff down there in Richmond, trying to date up some mouse, you know? Maybe. Why all the phony jive? Heck, I ain't no square, you know? <laughs> Hi, Danny. Hi, Elmer. Hello, Hawkins. You all right? Why not? Uh, a cup of coffee, Elmer. Doggone, that gas is me. Wrecked like that and not even a scratch. And to top the break, Jerry Sykes takes a powder. Man, the town's real gone, you know? What about Jerry Sykes? Ask Ken. He drove his car home after the hop. Danny don't care. I bet you'd be happy if he never showed. Why don't you mind your own business? Shh. Stash the yap. Morning, Mr. Sykes. Uh, what can I do for you? Where are the papers? Well, the dispatch ain't come in yet. Probably be in on a 1010, you know? Say, Williams. Yes, sir? Heard anything? No, sir, Mr. Sykes, I haven't. Jerry Sykes, he's a natural drag, you know? Tell me, Jerry had a beef with Gilly Saturday night before he beat it. Kind of all of that corn liquor he was soaking up. Yeah? How was it you was able to latch onto that mouse, Danny? Maybe she got tired of waiting. <whistles> What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen the kind that folds? Want to go down to Brother's Pond with me, Hawkins? Gonna try dragging the pond. I reckon not. 
I reckon, I reckon. When are you going to stop talking like a hillbilly, Hawkins? Ah, he's nothing but a hinkty square. You going to dig that county fair, Danny? I might. You know that Jerry Sykes? Strictly a sticky icky. Remember the time he trimmed you down behind the schoolhouse? Acting like because his old man was J.B. Sykes giving more rights than other guys. You know, I never did dig that. Just because your old man was a criminal, that wasn't the reason why... You talk too much. Nothing in the whole town but squares. Hawkins! Hello, Sheriff. Made you jump, huh, fella? You gotta be careful. Wear your brain out thinking. I was looking for Mose Jackson. Tidewater freight ain't in yet. Who's the boy? Jesse Hawkins. Her nephew. Who? Daniel Hawkins. Ain't Yankee. He's from Chinamook. The mountains. Tell him to sit down. You heard him, young fella. Sit down. Educated fellow, that Mose. Engineer says he can read as good as anybody. Better. Read about every book there is, I guess. That's too many. Seven minutes late. Huh? Seven minutes late. They ought to whoop that engineer. <laughs> Who's that fellow just got off? Where? Yonder. Last car. You blind? Black suit. Preacher? Undertaker, detective. Town don't need any more preachers and undertakers. What use would we have for a detective? Peculiar animal, ain't he? Yeah. Ain't no telephone in there, mister. Cab driver will be here soon. Always is when the train comes in. Talkative cuss, ain't he? Maybe Uncle Joe was right. A detective. Mr. Chandler? Yes. I'm Mr. Sykes. How do you do? Well, I'll be hung for a witch. Old J.B. Sykes helping somebody. Must be an important guy. Well, what do you suppose a banker wants a man like that for? They tell me young Sykes ain't been seen since the dance Saturday. JB's been asking around. Think Jerry's up to something? How would I know? I guess not. Reckon you wouldn't care what happened to Jerry Sykes times he's licked you. Figures his old man being a banker makes him somebody. Ah, uh, you'll catch up with him one of these days. But detective. There's something to figure. Gilly. Dan. You're trembling. I've been waiting since two o'clock. But I told you three. I have to be at school for this. I can meet you after that. Let's walk. I know now why Jerry didn't call me on Sunday. Dan, I'm worried. No one's seen him since the dance and... Are you in love with Jerry? Oh, how could I be? Danny. 
Danny, I don't understand anything. Why are we meeting in secret places as if... as if we were hunted? Why, Dan? What is it in your eyes that you never say? It's like being in a long, dark tunnel. Why do you say that? The way you look and act and talk. Where will I meet you tonight? Blackwater. The old mansion? Isn't that where Mose lives? He's out in the back. He'll never know we're there. Danny, I hate this. What are we hiding? You make me feel guilty when I've done nothing. Danny. Danny. Why don't you tell me I'm, I'm crazy or, or, or upset or that it, there's nothing to be afraid of? That's right. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just keep saying it. There's nothing to be afraid of. Mose? Yeah? Look at Mr. Dog. No manners. No manners at all. Where have you been lately? All around. I figured I'd come over and find out when we might go hunting for coon. A couple of fellas from the lodge asked me yesterday to take him out. If the air stays clear, I'll have to take him out tomorrow night. Railroading isn't going to feed Mr. Dog. Mr. Dog. Why do you call everything Mr.? Isn't enough dignity in the world. Come here, I want to show you something. She did her duty by the dog race. Daisy Bell. Daisy Bell, I'll be doggone. Look what you went and done. Oh. <laughs> Who's Pappy? Juniper. Never saw such a disgusted dog. Came in and took one look and made a very rapid departure. Oh, this sad little face. How you know it was Juniper? Always tell when Mr. Dog did something he shouldn't. Like killing a chicken. He acts guilty. Guilty as all get out. Well, how does he know what's good and what's bad? Someone told him. Philosophical mood, aren't you? Not particular. Kind of serious. Got me a girl. Got me a girl. Ain't you interested? I guess so. What are you going to do about it? Oh, I only met her a few times to talk to. I think maybe she's afraid. Afraid? Because of what happened to your pappy? I don't know. What if she's right? What if there's bad blood in me, Mose? Makes me do bad things. I don't know what you're talking about, bad blood. Blood is red. It keeps you alive. It doesn't tell you what you have to do. Tell you something, Daniel. When I was a brakeman, I found a hobo sleeping in a boxcar once on my run down from Roanoke. There was something about the lonesome, cold look on his face and the way he was lying there that made me throw my coat over him and leave him. The next I heard was when the sheriff grabbed my dogs to chase him. I never felt right about the sheriff using the dog. It's all right for a dog to chase a coon, but not a man. Did they, did they catch him? He was sent up for 15 years for making love to the constable's daughter when she didn't want any. Do you think he was bad? Well, he was... he was guilty. Sure. But first, he was lonesome. I think he got 15 years for being lonesome. Not from having bad blood. 
Yeah, but you get lonesome out here at Blackwater when you're back to the swamp, don't you, Mose? But you don't commit no crimes. Sure, I get lonesome. Man ought to have a woman. Friends, anyway. Man ought to live in a world with other folks. When I came out here, I thought I would be out of the way. I thought there'd be no one shoving me around. What I did was resign from the human race. And I guess that's about the worst crime there is. Only they don't hang you for it. But what's all this talk about good and bad? What has that to do with your girl? You didn't do anything that makes you ashamed. Oh, nothing. Nothing in particular, I reckon. No one more child recite on the shores of Kichiku. Yeah, but at least you're working. Time goes so slow. This afternoon it seemed like all the clocks in Virginia stopped at once. And at night they they hurry in making up time. It's her room. Uh, she, she wants us always to behave properly in her home. As though she were here to chaperone us. She don't care as long as we had Yankees. And so we shall, Miss Lizzie, I promise you. Good evening, Captain Hawkins. Any brave officer General Lee's is most welcome at Blackwater. Gilly, I... Colonel Calhoun! I'd admire the dance. Oh, Gilly, stop fooling around. Five minutes you're going to say it's late, you have to be going home. And tomorrow night I have to be hunting coon with Mose and... I... My! You soldiers are so strong. Oh, Gilly. Oh, aren't you going to dance with little old me? <laughs> Cut it out, will you? Oh, please, Captain. Don't crush the taffeta. Lovely party, Miss Blackwater. I've never seen you like this before, Gilly. I've never been like this before.
can't do business that way, Mr. Sykes. I know you're anxious, but there's only one person that can give us the answer. Suppose you don't find him. Well, we practically always do. Not 100%, but practically always. Well, things always look better in the morning, Mr. Sykes. Good night. Good night. Aren't we heading pretty much to the east? Pretty much. Well, that's going to fetch us right smack in Brother's Pond, through the swamp. Give those fellas their money's worth. Might even get their feet wet. Well, there ain't no coon in Brother's Pond. Shh. Daisy Bell. Sounds like they got something. Who says there's no coon at Brother's Pond? Eating them dogs here, restless. Send crazy, that's all. Don't make noise like that for coon. We'd better tell the hunting gentleman to come along. We'll take the path past the dance hall. Uh, uh, aren't we going back the same way as we came? Well, why? We save three miles on the road, and it's easier. If you gentlemen will please come along, it's nearly two o'clock. Know what's better than those dogs? They found something. Sure, sin. Jerry Sykes. Yeah. There's no reason to kick the dog. She didn't kill Jerry Sykes. Sure you want a gig? I might have to climb up a stepladder, and I don't want to break my leg for nothing. If you got one, I want it. Hello, Sheriff. Judson, back. Yeah. 
you sweet on Gilly Johnson by any chance? No. Who's boy? In Yankee. It's a darn good knife, Daniel. Only had two. That's one of them. Sold the other one last spring. Yeah, sold it to a young father. Why, heck, it was you. What do you want another one for? I... I, I was just looking. I... I Why, jumping G. Hossifat. Something's wrong. Jump and Jehoshaphat, will you look at that? There been another wreck somewhere? Murder's more like it. That's what's left of the Sykes boy. Daniel. had a grudge against Jerry Sykes. Lots of people didn't like Jerry. Mm -hmm. Come on, I'll buy you a soda. Daniel, a small town's like a stomach, always digesting. Eat a green apple, nothing happens right away. But two hours later, you get a bellyache. Folks talk, Daniel. Sometimes the talk adds up. Shucks, I can catch me a criminal quicker just walking down Main Street and listening than I can with a pack of bloodhounds. Learned a thing or two already this morning, Daniel. Know the little man in black got off the 1010 the other day? Bank examiner. Seems young Sykes helped himself to around $2,000 out of Pappy's cash box. Doggone. <laughs> that Williams boy, the band leader. Folks say Jerry Sykes owed him quite a bit of money. Quite a bit. What's buzzing, cousin? Everything hot in the slot? Stash that and dig another. It's only a blip. Hey, Elmer. Be right with you. Clear track four. Come on, Bob. I got a blow. That Ken Williams. Where does a college boy badly to latch on to all that? Let us see waves around. Hey, Elmer, let's go. Come in, Mother. Must be those stud games out of Brother's Pond. He sure don't make it waving no sticks. You ever play cards in the back room at Brother's Pond, Daniel? No. Uh, Ken asked me to a game Saturday night, but I ain't got that kind of money. Well, I guess you have. Did Williams leave the bandstand any time during the dance? Yeah. Yeah, there's ten minute breaks between dances. Mm-hmm. Guess I'll have to ask Williams a few questions. Heck, I promised to take my wife to the fair tonight, too. Sure, I hate to miss that fair. Can't be in two places at once. Yeah, I learned a thing or two this morning, Daniel. The county fair, your own county fair, presents for the first time the Syrian enchantresses direct from the forests of Lebanon. The show starts in just a moment. He sells the tickets. They're only a dime, ten cents, two thick pickles, a tenth part of a dollar. And on the inside, they unveil the most artistic, stupendous, and blood-steering pants ever seen. So, Hattie, 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 get your tickets and don't shout, don't pound. After all, the show starts inside. So, Hattie, 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 
it only costs you a dime. Don't crowd, I, don't uh, shop, don't push us. I don't think the school board would approve my blood everybody. being stirred. So buy your tickets one little teeny bitsy dime, ten cents, tenth part of a dollar, and see the greatest show on earth. The show starts immediately on the inside. He sells the tickets that only cost you a dime, ten cents, two thick nickels, a tenth part of a dollar. And on the inside, they will unveil the most artistic... Who's girl? ...that's ever seen my man. They are folks who just had a brief... Hey, glimpse Jackie! ...what goes on on the inside. A brief glimpse of the secret dance is seen by desert sheiks behind us. <laughs> I can't get over it. What? You and I and... And all these people. But why not? They can't keep us a secret forever. <laughs> uh, why was I afraid? Why were we afraid all this time? Buy me a sponge sugar. Gilly. What, Dan? Just Gilly. It's a nice name. I'm glad we came. Buy me a sponge. Take your pick, anyone you want. Six toys. Don't crowd at me, you won't get All right. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Would a penny be enough? Hmm? Would it? Oh. I was just wondering. What? I was wondering who could have hated Jerry enough to kill him. Folks say it was Ken Williams that uh, picked him up today. I know. The sheriff asked me a lot of questions. <laughs> Danny Hawkins! Huh? <laughs> right lucky I saw you. Been looking all over to tell you something before I forget it. Uh oh. Forgot it. Oh, no, that knife of yours. Uh, Billy's scripture was out in the back of my store whittling with it this evening. Just because Billy found a knife don't mean it's mine. Oh, it couldn't be anybody else's. We had but two of that kind of knife in the first place. Well, I gotta get over at the jam contest. Lydia Simpkins is waiting for me, and I gotta rescue the sheriff and his wife, Martha. Sheriff, he ain't here. Sure is, but he ain't happy about it. The sheriff's with... With Williams, they... Uh-uh. Let Williams off scot-free about an hour ago, and Martha's fit to be tired. Says the whole town will think he's off his head. Of course, I got my own ideas about what happened. Well, I gotta be going. I wish they had that cinnamon bar here this year. That knife's yours, all right. Billy must have found it when you was out hunting. Good night. And try your skill. Six balls for a quarter. Six balls to try and spill the milk. What kind of questions did the sheriff ask you? We asked about everybody. Asked whether you had ever shown a grudge against Jerry. If you please, folks. Either step up and take a chance or uh, don't block the way for them as it would like to, huh? Hey, you look like you got a pretty good arm there, fella. Why not take a chance and win the young lady a prize? Okay, pal. Six balls for a quarter. Here we go. Take a box of candy home to your mother. What'd you tell him? I told him I didn't know you very well. One down and five to go. That's true, I don't. Did you have a grudge against Jerry? Ah, oh, a baseball player, eh? Let's change the subject. I don't like to talk about Jerry. Watch the young man prove how easy it is to do it. I know. All right, who'll be next now? Six balls for a quarter. <laughs> My arm's sore. Hey! Hey, hey, wait a minute! Hey, wait a minute, your prize! Hey, your box of candy! You're pushing people, Dan. Let's get on a ride. Six, please. Now, don't crowd out. Dad, you all get on. Yes. How old are you? How old? Four. Here, where are you going? Dad, 
their motives. It's disgusting, that's what it is. Releasing that cold-blooded killer. One of the finest boys in this town has been murdered. Sure is remarkable how Diane can make a saint of a man. Dan. Go ahead. Grab a seat. Two, please. Well, she sure didn't wait long to tie up with another boy. Martha. Martha. Who's Gilly Johnson tied up with? For heaven's sake, Clem, with Jesse Hawkins' nephew. Been thick as fleas ever since Jerry disappeared. Now there's something to figure. Dan, why do you always get angry so suddenly? I'm not angry. Up, it's like you're floating. Gilly? Gilly. Dan, you keep trying to tell me something. What? When the sheriff was talking to me, he said something about your father and how Jerry and the others had always used it against you. Is that why you keep hitting out at people? Trying to get even? Pa had it pretty tough. After I was born, Ma... Ma took sick at night. Doctor said it was too far to come. It wasn't serious. Gave Pa a bottle of pills. She died the next day. Pa carried me to Grandma's cabin, came into town. Shot the doctor. Shot him dead. Took three bullets to kill him. Took them three weeks to hang Pa.
Have you been back in the hills to see your grandmammy lately? Not lately. Pretty old lady, isn't she? I'll go see her one of these days. Mighty peaceful there, up Chinamook Way. I have a feeling for mountains. Daylight coming in the morning. Hangman waiting on the stone. Rope hanging from the gallows. Pit waiting for my bone. What you singing? A story, Daniel. A blue story. Don't send me flowers. Don't send me mail. For where I am going, I won't need no bail. You're saying something. All stories say something. You're saying it to me. Just talking. Talking to Mr. Gitto. You're talking to me, but you won't speak it plain. Daylight coming in the morning. Hangman waiting on the stone. How long you known? Since coon hunt night. I never saw you kick a dog before. Lonesome. Lonesome. You gonna tell? No. I figure I'll let you do the telling. You have to tell someone, Daniel. You have to. Or else you'll go on killing a dead man over and over. And you can't do that. Mmm. -hmm. Sorry, I kicked your dog.
check the railroad station and the bus stop. Did George pick up the school teacher? Okay. I think you've gone plumb crazy on this case, Clem. Why'd you let Williams go? You had enough simple facts to convince the jury. What's a simple fact, Chick? A man's dead. That's a fact. Simplest fact there is. Jake, you're a doctor. You ought to know a lot about folks. I knew a man once kept accusing his wife of being unfaithful. After listening to him for 12 years, she was. <laughs> Proves he was right. He was just a little premature. That's all. I say the husband was a lot responsible for what his wife did. Sometimes murder is like love. It takes two to commit it. The man who hates and the man who's hated. The killer and the killed. Yeah. All I know is, I've got a corpus delicti down there with a hole in his head. If you went into all the reasons why that rock struck Jerry's head, you might end up writing the history of the world. <laughs> uh, you should have been a preacher, Clem. Not a bloodhound. All I know is that a human being and what's made him is a lot more than you cut out of him at the autopsy table, Jake. Not when they're dead. Come in, Miss Johnson. I've got a problem. I thought maybe you might help me. Are you in love with Daniel Hawkins? Yes. What would you say if I told you Daniel killed Jerry Sykes? I wouldn't believe it. Because you wouldn't want to believe it? No. Because he's not hard like he pretends. Because inside he's gentle and lonely and lost. Because you won't let him forget for one minute that his father died like a criminal. Because... I know. That's why I want him to come back and confess of his own accord. Daniel Hawkins left town sometime last night. When you used to see him, he must have gone someplace, someplace special. Where? No special place. What are you trying to get from me, Sheriff? Why do you want me to help you? So you can hound him like he's been hounded all his life? Right now, I can send Daniel to jail for life. Worse, maybe. Juries might not believe a man who has to be brought back in handcuffs. I don't want him punished beyond what's right. He's taken his share already for a long time. I know Danny. I knew Jerry. Jerry's been attacking and deviling them ever since they were school kids. Then you think it was self-defense? Only Daniel Hawkins can tell us what happened. That's why I want him to come back of his own accord. Then a jury will believe what he says. You don't have to stay any longer, Miss Johnson. Only if you know where to find the boy, find him. Tell him to come back before it's too late. While he still has time to pay his punishment and still has most of his life to live like an ordinary human being.
have to say goodbye. Why didn't you tell me? I tried to, but I was afraid. What if I lost you? What if you wouldn't touch me? Uh, what have I got to lose anymore? Why should I be afraid? Don't you understand? From here on, it's all bad. Dan. Dan, don't be afraid. Billy. I almost killed Billy. The guy I've helped and protected all my life. He didn't even know what it was all about. If he'd raised his hands, I think I would have killed him. Oh, get out of here! You should have sent me away when I might have gone. It's too late now. Dan, please don't hurt me anymore. Oh, Gilly, Gilly. Dan, you've got to go back. Ain't nobody gonna shake me out of a tree like a coon. Maybe someday. Someday won't be soon enough. Dan, the sheriff knows you're not a killer. And I knew it without even asking. Gilly, I don't even know what happened. He came at me with a rock. The next thing I knew, he was lying there. Go back, Dan. I ain't clear. I gotta get answers. But you won't get them this way. Maybe not for the rest of your life. I gotta get answers. Where will you go? Maybe Chinamook, the grandma. Ma and Pa buried there on top of the ridge. After that? I don't know. What are you thinking? Only how it will be tomorrow. Going into a schoolroom. Asking a lot of questions about the dead history. And you. And you. Don't make no sense. He'd stay here. Once he got started, he'd keep going. You think that Moses was telling the truth, that he hadn't seen him? Boy, he was up here a lot. Don't see no windows, Pride. I'm going. Maybe too late, but I'm going to try. Mose. You're not going to ask me to hunt my friend, are you, Sheriff? I need you to handle the dogs. I wish they were dead. This is no place for a woman. Why don't you go on back to...
Going in there. He's in the swamp. Come on, fellas, leash up. We'll have to circle and pick it up where he comes out. <laughs> took till the trial. Your Aunt Jessie sent these up from town. Hey, your father's son, Daniel. Especially the eyes and the voice. What kind of voice? Low, but not weak. Funny thing. I never heard Jeff Hawkins raise his voice except when he was happy. Then you could hear it across mountains. What's that about, Pa? His voice? About his being happy. When was Pa happy? Jeb. Why, he could kick a floor like eight horses when they had a good fiddler at the dance. Prime man, Jeb. Prime man. You seen him the night he came home from his wedding, back to this cabin he built special. It was sun up. They'd been dancing all the time. When they came in that door. Jeb looked as if he never needed sleep again in his life. So fresh he was. Like sparks out of a pine log. He was mighty proud of you, Daniel. Well, I ain't proud of Pa. He cursed me. He cursed me all my life. Can't hold something against a dead person, Daniel. Well, he held it against me. He held it against me all my life. All the beatings I took since I was a kid, out of kind of him. Never could get a job unless there was nobody else left to hire. The girls walking away from me like I was poison. Hello, Hawkins, they'd say. Simple, ain't it? Yet every time they said it, I wanted to change my name. Why didn't he think of me? He did. Well, it was too late. Some folks think he done wrong. Some think he done right. I think he acted like the man he was, settling a question hard and quick. He loved Betty. He loved you. He never did nothing through hating or fearing. Leave me be. He paid. He tried to spare you. He told me to send you away and change your name. I sent you away, but I didn't change your name. I was proud of his name. Now I know why you want to hate your pa. I wondered why you came back after so long, bleeding, smelling a swamp. And hating your pa. Take till morning, I reckon, to pick up your scent past the creek. Pa could have gone over the ridge and down the river on a log. No dogs that follow you there. You telling me to run away? No. A man has to handle himself his own way. Good night to you, Daniel. Good night, Grandma.
your pa found the answer, Daniel. It was a rock hard answer, but he found it. He waited just about where you're sitting now. I done right, he told me. If I done wrong, I'm gonna square it. Maybe they'll leave the boy be. Not make him grow up paying for what I've done. To the man, Daniel. The coward blames what he does on other folks. Take up your trail past the creek. Better hit the river before they break cover in the meadow. you done, Pa. All the same, I didn't mean what I said last night. You did the best you could to even things up. That's what I'm doing now. Maybe we'll both have some peace. you'd got the bit in your teeth. Wonderful to see your face, Dave. To really see you. What you doing there? Leave the boy be. Let him walk back like a man. to rejoin the human race. Once he's resigned, it helps, Mr. Dog. It helps. <laughs> 